Good day and welcome to the CNBCAfrica.com special. I'm Avir Mtila and today I'm joined by one of the youngest millionaires in the African continent, Frank Buyanke. Welcome, Frank. Thank uh, you for inviting me. <laughs> and looking up about you, I, I read somewhere that you, you don't know how many businesses and cars you own. Let's start over there. How many businesses and cars do you own? It's very difficult to... It's, it's very difficult to count the number of businesses or, or vehicles that one has when you, when, you, when you have been living on this, on this earth for 36 years. It's, it's a long time, you know, and mm. uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I, I, can't, I, 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 I can't answer that question because it's just very difficult. We're talking about businesses, yeah, registered yes. businesses. Yes. I'm sure at least you have an idea on that. No, I don't, because I, my first business I set up in 1999. That was my first business, which was uh, in, in the UK. And uh, thereafter, I've set up so many businesses. It becomes very difficult to, to, to keep um, your tab on how many businesses you have. Fair enough, fair enough. But let's go into Frank Boyanga. Can you give us a bit of a background about Frank Buyanke? You, you just stated that you started your first businesses in the, in the late 90s. Can you give us more detail? No, I mean, what it was, basically, my dad was a business person. Mm. So growing up, I could see all the faults that he made in his businesses. And I advised him. Um, I started advising him when I was 12 years old. But then again, when you're 12, your father looks at you and sort of thinks that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But if you look in hindsight, um, I was actually correct. So I saw the mistakes he made in his businesses, the, all the mistakes my mom made in her business. She was in the business of uh, clothing, exporting clothes to Germany uh, through her manufacturing brand, through um, Wonder Fashion. So I learned a lot from them employing hundreds of employees and making mistakes on a daily basis. And that is why um, I probably started even much earlier than when I was 19, because I would advise my dad on what and what not to do in his businesses. Um, as you would know, there's a lot of notoriety around Frank Boyanga. Um, even the name even, there's a lot of notoriety around there. Is your actual name Frank? Yes, my name is Frank. Mm. Yes, yes. And Dawanda? That's Where does that one come? of my names. When you come? Well, yes. Because in the research, as I mentioned, that I did, there's, there's something there about you changing your name when you moved, I think, 2009 or something like that. Yeah, no, I think that's um, the issue about my name. It's, it's, it's really immaterial, uh, but it's, my name is, is Frank, Tawanda, Buyanga, and Siddiqui is my tribe. So those are all parts of my name. Um, uh, whether I choose to say my name is Frank, or my name is Buyanga, or my name is Siddiqui, I, I don't know if it's, 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 it's a material issue. Okay. So you relocated to South Africa. Um, I wouldn't say I relocated to South Africa. I have businesses in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I have homes in South Africa. I have interests in South Africa, but I'm located in several locations. Okay. Yes. But um, as I, I, I mentioned before, yes. media hype around you, notoriety around you, um, 45 people that have come out from Zimbabwe alleging fraud against you. Can you clarify these with us? Well, 45 people is just 45 people. Whether it's 45 people or 10,000 people, whether they're wrong, all right. If they're wrong, they remain wrong. Whether they're 10,000 or 20,000. Mm. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's 45 people, because these 45 people are just complainants who have now been discredited by so many faculties of the judicial system over the years, and they continuously to run out of options on a daily basis. Uh, you always have complainants. Me and you complain every day about certain issues. We complain about how the government is running, um, the social services and all the uh, ancillary services in our areas, people are prone to complain. People are complainants by nature. And you were on the International Police Wanted list. Can you tell us about that? How did you get on the list, firstly? I think basically what happened is there was a misunderstanding uh, within the structures of the police and the National Prosecuting Authority. They uh, were looking to speak to me and I was probably not available at the time. And that led to them issuing an international warrant of arrest. I think that was in 2011, 2012. The international warrant of arrest then led to the Interpol uh, listing. I believe that in terms of the constitution that um, underpins Interpol, uh, Interpol was actually wrong in the way in which they listed me on the 
red notice. It's a matter and it's an issue that I'll take up with them at a later stage. Um, but again, you know, Zimbabwe, uh, much the same as South Africa, are signatories. So when they send their request to Interpol to put someone on Interpol, they put that person on Interpol. Whether Interpol is right or wrong in terms of uh, uh, their decision is, is an issue that is very questionable. And I think within the institution, uh, there's quite a lot of things that has, have to be dealt with and have to be looked into. Because I feel that there's a lot of people today who are on Interpol that um, should not be on Interpol. They're on Interpol because they have internal strife within their countries. Or they're on Interpol because um, someone just got angry and said that person's going to be on Interpol. But again, as I rightfully say, the issues that need to look, be looked into in Interpol. So you're saying you're not supposed to be on the Interpol wanted list? Oh, basically, the look, list. at the end of the day, it's a waste of taxpayers' money, isn't it? You know what I mean. I mean, it's just someone that's made a decision to put someone on Interpol. And because they're using state resources, and the person is using their own resources, state resources, because it's taxpayers' money, is obviously worth much more than any individual. So you're fighting the state. So when you're fighting the state, it's a long struggle. There's a lot of notoriety around your name, but uh, I've just mentioned a few. There's also, you're also recently linked to South Africa's public protector state capture report. That's not true. That's not true at all. As a matter of fact, that is just people that have got overexcited about my association with certain individuals within the South African fraternity of influence, if I may call it. And that is wrong. Um, it is not correct. I don't even know how correct the the, the, the report itself is. It's, it's, there's, there's so many um, questions surrounding that particular report. And the people that are mentioned uh, there, some of them are people that were material to the sustenance of the delivery of this nation to where it is today. Um, people such as Fauna Jongwani, who are very intelligent people, people that are uh, uh, within the structures of this um, liberty that I talk about today. So I think when people are now happy in their homes and they're now eating pap and chakalaka, they seem to forget the real people that brought them to where they are today. So I think that's where the issue is. But I would like to go back to your question and say to you, look, it is definitely not the case that I am mentioned in that particular report. But I think it's just some people that were very um, mischievous, if I can say, uh, who brought that issue up. What do you have to say with all of this negative image that you're getting? I don't think it's negative. And often. I no, personally you. don't think it's negative. I think it's just a misconception. And it's, it's, it's people that... Being on the Interpol list is not the, what negative. Is, what is the Interpol list? What is it? I mean, at the end of the day, what is it? What is it? I mean, it's just a list, isn't it? Mm. So but what? I wanted this in, by the international so police. So what? So what? <laughs> yeah, you, so you, what? You don't consider that to be effective in the image as a businessman no, I don't. that you are? No, no, I don't. I still have gold in the ground. I still have power. What's the problem? Okay. And then as your business image then? Yes. Now we're looking at you as but a I businessman. Don't, don't. Look, I maintain a very clean business image because the people I deal with every day, I deliver what I say I deliver and I do what I say I will do. And that is what matters to me. What the police say, what the Interpol says, these are people in uniform. Take off the uniform and what are they? Okay, now I get you. Let's talk now about young entrepreneurs that look up to you, want to be Frank Boyanga. Mm -hmm. What message would you send to them? And how would you tell them to deal with notorious um, images that, that recently come up against you? I think, look, um, for, 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 for young entrepreneurs, I think, that is the future of Africa. I, I, I look at the world from a topological perspective. I don't look at the world on a ground level. So when I look at the world, I see young people as the future. That is why me and my institutions invest in young people, because that is the future. Um, young people need to self-propel themselves. They need to self-discover who they are. In Africa today, we are the authors 
of the world's destiny, but we don't know it. Africa today has the greatest resource, apart from human capital, apart from our mining and our uh, resources in the ground, apart from our tradition. Africans have the greatest resource the world has to offer, but the only people that don't know are the Africans. The only people that are ignorant are the Africans. The only people that are not united are the Africans. But everyone else seems to know about the wealth that's in Africa. I'll give you an example. And everyone knows this. 40% of all the, all, the, all the gold, approximately 40%, has come from this very country we live in today. But this country does not regulate the price of that commodity. This country, if you go into every home, um, we're not under the knowledge of these things. We are price takers. We are not price givers. And that within itself is a problem. So when you talk about young entrepreneurs, I think we need a new culture. We have set up many foundations. We've put many money. I've created thousands of jobs in South Africa. I have uh, promoted so many people in this country. So have I in Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and other countries. But I think what's important at this stage is um, for the young people to understand who they are as an African, young African entrepreneur. Uh, the money's in the ground. <laughs> it's not what you see. And uh, they make a mistake and they see the lifestyle and they think that's where the money is, yet the money's in the ground. It is for them to study and develop their mind, develop the human capital capacity to then go into engineering, to then go into uh, you know, around, uh, you know, into all sorts of avenues that will allow them to become the people that drive South Africa and Africa to the future. Africa has one billion people, or over one billion people. I don't quite know exactly what the figures are, and we do not have a single seat on the United Nations Security Council. We do not have industries that beneficiate our raw material. We have a long way to go. We do not have vehicles that travel in the air, but we have the tantalite, we have the lithium, we have all the resources to create vehicles that travel in the air. We have all these things, but we don't seem to be able, as Africans, to unite, to have a common goal, to have a common purpose. Instead, we concentrate on Nagoa, we concentrate on the FICA bill, we concentrate on Nkandla, we concentrate on SABC. I mean, really, this is utter stupidity. <laughs> we, we, we are looking at issues from a very minuscule and immature perspective. Instead of dealing with the real issues, why are we not discussing with the United Nations issues? Why is it when Libya gets bombed, South Africa has no word that can change that? And yet, you know, the elephant in the room gets even much bigger. But internal and civil tension then takes the mindset away from the real issues. So when you talk to me about Interpol, when you talk to me about all these things, it, 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 it's just, to me, it's an elephant on the back of, a, of the elephant's bum. Which is why I think it's important we clear them up, get them out there so that the people know who Frank Buyanga is. Get to Frank Buyanga, the real Frank Buyanga. Well, I'm a reverend at the end there. of the day. I'm a reverend and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a preacher of the, the Word of God. Is that your full-time job? It's just my significant job, yeah. Okay. I help people and, and, and you know, they come, they see me and they, they're happy. And building relationships, how important is it to you? Building relationships is very important. But it, the terms in which you build those relationships is even more important. Um, as I say, as Africans, we shouldn't be takers. So if someone comes to me and the manifesto is driven by an agenda that I don't agree with, then we'll play the long game. And I'm happy to play the long game. So we shouldn't be takers, we should be givers rather. We, as Africans today, should dictate the way that the world is run. That's what we should do. Should be giving. Back to the, the, to the reports. There was a gift from you that was alleged sent to, to President Mugabe's daughter. Was that one of the building relationships no, um, no, no, not motives. at all. No, 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 no. I think that was, uh, again, mischievous conduct from sections of the media, wherein they um, obviously um, 
hijacked or obviously found a letter out of many letters that I've written to His Excellency Robert Gabriel Mugabe stating that um, I was unhappy with the way in which the parastatals have been run in Zimbabwe. I was unhappy uh, about the way in which um, the police and, and various security sectors, except the army, because the army is the only well-run institution in that country, uh, were doing things. So I think the sections of the media then took that letter and took out one line which talked about his daughter's gift. And uh, I think that was mischievous of them. And it was misconstrued in the way it was. Did you find a need to mention the daughter's I gift? I did not in mention the, letter. the daughter's gift in the letter in the way in which the media spelt it out, no. I simply reminded the president that all his cabinet ministers could not donate what I could donate to his cause. And that was mischievously put in there. Okay, so you were telling them that all your ministers do not have the weight that you have. No, I don't think I was saying that to him. I was saying to him that I am not employed by the Zimbabwe government. I've never been given a contract by the Zimbabwe government. I've never, no favor has ever been given to me by the Zimbabwe government. But I still remain a taxpayer. I pay higher taxes than 95, probably 98% of each and every Zimbabwean. I am an employee in the country. I have donated to several uh, institutions uh, in the country. I've done my bit as a Zimbabwean. So I think there's a thin line there, but I was basically demonstrating to him that um, I have done no wrong. I have not stolen from anyone in Zimbabwe. All I've done in Zimbabwe is to try and add value, such in the way that Hamilton Property Holdings, Hamilton Finance, and all the Hamilton companies try to do. But obviously we've got the uh, wrong end of, um, of, of the stick and, and, and now we're suffering for it. Why is the media fighting you so much? Because I, even I, the Hamilton properties and, and, and the Hamilton group basically, they, they license issues there. Are they licensed? Yeah, they are licensed. Hamilton Property Holdings is a property buying company. It owns over 400 properties um, and uh, that's only in Africa. It's obviously a company that, um, you know, people um, are trying to renege and if I can take you back what happened is there was a company called Hamilton Finance and I've said this before Hamilton Finance was a money lending company registered by the Reserve Bank to lend money when people started defaulting on their loans to the to, to the Hamilton Finance because there was thousands of these people they started making complaints that you know, we shouldn't, uh, the, this agreement wasn't proper, it, we didn't go to court, things weren't done properly, there was no due process. And then that went further. And then some people who I bought properties from, because I've been buying properties since 1999 um, in Zimbabwe, I've got hundreds of properties there. And um, the people that then saw an advantage to jump onto the bandwagon and join the Hamilton Finance people sought to confuse issues. But Hamilton Property Holding is a property buying company. It has nothing to do with loans. Hamilton Finance is a loaning company. But the people who sold me properties from Hamilton Fi uh, in Hamilton Property Holdings looked for an exit route to try and blackmail me or some of them got me arrested, some of them tried to get the police to come and, uh, and, and convince me to give them back their property. Some of them got ministers to come and talk to me. Some of them got very high officials to come and talk to me, but I refused. Because look, I'm a man of principle. Whether I sleep on the streets tomorrow and I have nothing. I'm going to sleep on the streets, but I'm not going to bend over for, you know, for, for, for pittance or, or someone who says, look, I'm going to sort this out for you, but, you know, give me back my property. Each and every property that I've bought, whether it's me, my nephews, my family, my empire, that takes them over 100 years, that's that. I'm not going to stop. Whether the judges um, look at it favorably today, which I believe that they do, or they don't, uh, you know, uh, the legal fraternity has existed from the time of Magna Carta to the 1600s. Um, so it's not an issue. An, an agreement of sale will always remain an agreement of sale. Um, and we'll wait and see what happens. And how was your relationship with the president of Zimbabwe and the government? I basically? respect the president of Zimbabwe. He's my president. <laughs> he's saying that, I mean, he's the guy's my president. You know, whether he's being used by people within Zimbabwe for their own agendas, whether his name is being <laughs> smeared by people who are working for him is another issue. But the Constitution tells me that I need to respect my president. The Bible tells me that I need to respect my president. 
I can't move away from that. Whether he's done wrong. I mean, the guy's old enough to be my grandfather. <laughs> what am I going to do to him? What are you going to do to him? Yeah. We need to come on. We need to have a bit of... I've got warrants of arrest in Aurora today. I don't need to support the president of the day. But it's not about supporting the president. It's about pro pro supporting the constitution, supporting the elements of justice, the elements of integrity, the elements of, 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 of ethics. And, and your thinking needs to be right. So just because someone's done something wrong, it doesn't mean they overall, all of us have done something wrong. There's no one on this earth that can stand up there and say, look, we've never sinned. But we need to look at the positive in each and every person. And that means looking at the positive within our own country. The biggest problem we have today in Zimbabwe is there's no unity. That is why there's factional politics. Because a faction of people will grab money, they'll go and run a, a, a campaign, and they'll go and buy some people with mealy milk, because you know how the people in the rural areas are. I mean, they're very gullible. I mean, these people are gullible. And what happens is, these ministers or these uh, state resources are incorrectly used to go and confuse those people. And that is the fear that's there. And those people don't have a choice. They will have to continue. Having said that, I still maintain that the country's biggest cancer is the inability for people to be united. And it's the same case that is happening all over Africa, not only in Zimbabwe. You can go to West Africa, you can come here to South Africa, where you can see on a daily basis that there's confusion in the system. And there's confusion that's deliberately being placed there so that people can, be, can forget about the past. Because the, the gene that we have within us as Africans, unfortunately, we seem to, to, to remember much less of the bad and we remember much more of what's happening today. And uh, the stomach seems to be the driver of our decision making. So if someone comes to you with $10,000 or $5,000, your decision changes. And uh, all you need to do is give a board member and his 10 members $10,000, which is $100,000, to make uh, a decision. And that decision can take someone out of power very quickly. So I think I, I don't want to move away too much from the questions that you're asking me, but I think one has to be very careful about looking at an issue, because simplicity within itself is not simple. Now let's look into the future. Frank Boyange, what does the future hold for Frank Boyange? Because the grapevine is telling me that you're also looking to go into banking in South Africa. What does the future hold for Frank Boyange? Um, I think, no, I have partners within South Africa, uh, and these partners are the ones that um, we have spoken about, looking at different ways of um, empowering uh, the civil servants in South Africa, um, that is the Army, South African National Defense Forces, we have them already um, within our platform, the South African uh, police, the military veterans, um, and we have set up foundations for them and we have set up facilities for them so that these people don't need to go and borrow money at 12, 15 percent. I mean, for heaven's sake, these are the people that serve the interests of the nation. How do we have a soldier in this country having to pay an interest rate of 15%, having to go to a retailer and get blacklisted and be put on TransUnion? So some of the things we're doing in the background is we're creating a whole new financial uh, model for the South African people and hopefully for the rest of Africa that uh, we are working on at the moment. The details of this uh, particular model, I, I cannot give at this present moment in time because there are different NDAs uh, uh, with, with different companies at the moment. But I can comfortably say that we are working very, very closely with the South African National Defense Forces, um, their subsidiaries, and we have, um, we have, we have gotten off the ground now. Frank Mianga, thank you for coming to, to CNBC Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was Frank Bianga, cnbcafrica.com.